This video is about FAI treatment options, the surgical and the non-surgical options. If you're someone who just found out you have FAI, um, you might be looking through, okay, what can I do about it? And if you're researching online, you'll probably come across a few items. People will say, you can just rest. You've got a bunch of pain in your hip, just rest, take some drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, you might get an injection, something to just calm down that fire in your hip. The advantage is that doesn't cost you anything. Um, rest is usually a good thing. It'll calm down the fire. Unfortunately, it doesn't really solve the root cause. It doesn't solve the mechanical problems going on in your hip that have caused it to get inflamed and pissed off in the first place. So usually, People might try that, but they realize they have to go to something more in depth. That's usually when they start looking at physical therapy. Physical therapy, um, in my own experience, having seen a lot of physical therapists and from having talked to a lot of people who have FAI who have tried physical therapy, almost everyone at least tries it. Some people have tried multiple physical therapists. From what I've heard and from what I've found in my own experience, it can be very hit or miss, meaning you might get a physical therapist who is really, really good. Ideally, they actually experienced FAI themselves and worked their way out of it non-surgically, so then they can help you do that. And they spend a lot of time with you, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Um, I wish that was the norm, um, but I'm afraid to say it's usually not. Usually, it's the other side, where the physical therapist either has not had FAI themselves, and so their protocol is just based on theoretically might, what might work um, and some of those elements might help like usually they have you do some kind of glute strengthening some core strengthening um, which is good but it's incomplete I found that to completely come out of FAI non-surgically naturally you've got to be addressing the, the knots that you have in your muscles so for example if you have some really big knots and trigger points in your muscle bellies if you don't do something to massage it out, to normalize it, then that muscle can never be normal and therefore it can never um, allow your hip to move freely. It won't slide past other muscles freely when there's knots and adhesions and the muscles are stuck and glued together. So if your physical therapy protocol doesn't include some really targeted myofascial work, not just foam rolling, but really targeted, then it's incomplete. It's got to include something that stretches the muscles, you know, lengthening, allowing your brain to, to know, okay, going into this greater range of motion is okay, as long as there's no pinch or pain. So your protocol has to include tissue work, it's got to include stretching, and it's got, got to include strengthening and movement education. So the big M is movement education. This is obviously a bone. If you have a really, really messed up bone shape, like I'm talking extreme um, high levels of pincher impingement or cam impingement or combination like big time, then potentially, no matter what you do to the muscles and the movement, it won't fully resolve the problem. But I find that more often than in my own case, really working on the muscles and the movement um, allowed me to come from being on the verge of surgery and a ton of pain to being able to do the splits, deep squats, Olympic lifting, running, all that stuff, jumping, cutting, kicking, all that. Um, but most physical therapy protocols, coming back to the, the physical therapy, um, most of them that I've seen have not had a comprehensive approach. One guy was telling me that his physical therapy protocol was about 15 minutes of seeing the physical therapist, and it consisted of glute strengthening, quad strengthening, and core strengthening, and that was it. No stretching, no tissue work, no nothing. So physical therapy can be very hit or miss. Um, I'm not knocking it at all because there's some brilliant, brilliant PTs out there, many that I know and have been to personally, um, but very often they don't have enough time to really work you through all the stuff, all of the issues, teach you all the stretches, all the tissue work, teach you the motor control of squatting and lunging and all that stuff. Um, so it's pro, pro and con. I think it's a good idea if you can find a good person. Um, and it can definitely supplement the work you're doing on your own if you're working on something like our FAI Fix program or the FAI Fix for Athletes program, um, which we'll get into now. And basically, 
these programs um, are everything that I've ever learned from taking me from you know my girlfriend putting on my shoes for an entire month because I couldn't bend over because of my hip and back pain to being able to do all that stuff the running the jumping the doing the splits and stuff like that so these two programs are basically all of that knowledge in a very structured systematic way it's a do-it-yourself program DIY so the advantage is you can spend a lot more time than you would at like a physical therapy because you can do it in your own home and you can tinker and explore and do all that stuff. The disadvantage is there's not someone like me hands-on positioning your body and things like that. So you kind of have to explore, learn, bumble your way through things. Um, but another advantage of these kind of do-it-yourself programs um, that are created by people who actually live through the problem is it's gonna recommend some things that you're not gonna find in physical therapy. You're not gonna find your physical therapist. You're not gonna find them asking you to pick up these things and showing you how to get into like the deep, deep parts of your hip with the tissue work. Um, and we get into all kinds of very, very targeted tissue work in the FAI fix, which people report to me and I can wholeheartedly agree is like a game changer. If all you've been doing is just strengthening exercises or just resting or just some light stretching. The tissue work is really magical. Surgery is obviously the option that um, a lot of people consider. Um, it's the most kind of popular thing. It's pretty much been for a while the only option out there, kind of the only, the only player in the game. Um, unfortunately, surgery doesn't address anything of the muscles here. It just talks to the bones. Um, and surgery obviously doesn't train you how to move better. So you're not addressing the muscles, the knots, the stretching. You're not addressing the movement. You're just addressing the bone. That's an incomplete thing. Now, they might recommend, you know, after surgery to go to physical therapy, but we already covered the pros and cons of physical therapy. Um, so what about a combination? I mean, these things are not either or. It's not like you can't do physical therapy and the FAI fix. What about a combination of them? I actually think that's a really great idea because you kind of get the best of all worlds. Um, and I'm always pro non-surgical before surgical. Try some natural methods, get the low hanging fruit before you allow someone to uh, cut you open. Um, so, you know, what about doing the FAI fix? Or if you're at the level where you need the FAI fix for athletes, which is a more advanced program, what about doing the FAI fix plus physical therapy? You get someone to help you hands-on. They can guide you through, through some of the exercises in the FAI fix. Um, I think that can be a really magical combination. Um, and you know, of course, down the road, if you do physical therapy and the FAI fix the way it's meant to be done, all the exercises, you, you're emailing me, talking to me, I'm helping you saying, oh no, you don't need to be doing that exercise for you, you need to be doing this one. Um, if you've been doing all those, and it doesn't get better and better and better, which I haven't really found yet when people are really doing it right. But, you know, it can happen. It really can. Um, if these two things don't help, surgery is always um, another option. And it's unlikely that if you're doing physical therapy and the FAI fix and being in communication with me or Matt to make sure that you're doing it right, it's unlikely that it's going to be getting worse and worse and worse. If it is, there might be some serious bone stuff going on. But it's doubtful. I haven't seen it yet. So that's a little bit. I hope that made sense. Pros and cons. It's not black or white. It's not either or. How can they work together? Um, what's best for your situation? So if you have any questions about that, you want me to elaborate on something, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to correspond with you and uh, hope it helped. Talk to you next time.